The new MacBook Airs, they get pretty hot, yes, but uh, is there a proper way to cool them down? We've seen fans, thermal pads, water cooling, <laughs> and uh, some of those are more dangerous than others, at least in the way that they're being shown on YouTube. I've been trying to get this MacBook Air. This is the base model and I've shown that it throttles after doing two builds, basically any heavy duty build with C++ code or Xcode. And if it takes longer than about three to five minutes, it starts to throttle. I'm using Azzy Top to show that. It's an application that you can just download. It's a Python app that kind of gives you a visual representation of your usage. Now here I have Xcode benchmark and I've been running this continuously for about three runs or four now, at which point it did throttle previously but now it's not throttling and the only difference here is i put my macbook air on this fan surface i forgot what this thing is even called it's a laptop cooling pad with five fans and it can hold up to 17.3 inch heavy notebook it cost me 20 dollars on amazon this is not sponsored by them or anything but i did leave an affiliate link down below if you want to check this thing out 20 bucks and no more throttling that's pretty interesting so I'm building this again and I'm getting consistent times. Of course, I'm building this inside in my office, air conditioned. So there's no problem like I've seen when I took this machine outdoors in the sun in the hot weather. If you missed that video, check it out. I'll link to that video down below as well. So far, no problems. It's running as fast as possible, building this thing multiple times in a row. Now, I promise you this is not an advertisement for this pad. I just got it and I thought it was pretty cool because you can also use it to hold up the laptop. Now, let's take a look at the temperature here on the surface we got 41 degrees and it was going up to 108 degrees during the actual runs right now the process stopped and we're back down to about 50 degrees on the processor i got a couple of things to say about modifying your laptop and putting thermal pads into it if your laptop doesn't have a fan like this macbook air or the upgraded macbook air or the previous generation m1 macbook air then eventually they will throttle eventually they'll get hot enough if your build is long enough there's been a number of videos popping up on YouTube showing how to modify, how to get inside the lid, put thermal pads inside there. I would advise you to think twice about that. And here's my reasoning behind it, okay? This new design of the MacBook Air has many, many years of experience behind it. We're talking about people with engineering degrees, lots of engineers with lots of money being poured into research and development by Apple. That has some value. And to be able to say that, oh, why didn't they think of that? right? Why didn't they think of putting a thermal pad inside the laptop and it solves everybody's throttling problem and it's gonna suddenly make the performance of the machine better and the cooling of the CPU better. Now I don't work at Apple but I have a feeling that the engineers over there are pretty smart people and they've probably considered things like that. Now what I want you to consider is if you modify your laptop and you put thermal pads in there what is it really doing? Sure you're gonna be taking that heat away from the processor such it up into the thermal pad and then distributing that heat along the chassis of the machine but there is one little problem with that and there is one component in particular inside this machine that's the most sensitive to heat what component is that well the battery the battery is also in the case and when you're sucking the heat away from the processor and distributing it closer to the battery you're going to give that battery a nice short life so you might get some short-term performance benefits Benefits out of putting those pads in but in the long term you're probably going to damage your machine in one way or another so the YouTube videos that show that stuff are very interesting it's good to experiment with that kind of things and show people what's possible but I think that they should also come with a bit of a caveat and consider the entire picture and not just performance so this right here is an example of cooling your machine without modifying it and it seems to do a pretty good job now eventually I did see the throttle turn to yes and uh, it switched to no pretty quickly after that but it's lasted a lot longer than without the cooling pad the cooling pad is advertised to have no noise that's not the case I can hear it just fine and you can probably hear it in the microphone too one more thing about the cooling pad something to consider is it is completely powered by the machine itself so as you can see I do have it plugged into the MacBook Air and it's being powered by the USB output and I do need a USB C to USB A adapter for that there's five fans in here one big one in the middle and four little ones and if I bring it closer to the microphone 
you can probably hear that pretty well. Now, it is kind of bulky and annoying to carry with you. I doubt that this thing will easily fit into most backpacks. But one nice benefit is if you're sitting out and about and you need something to put your laptop onto, and you don't want to just put it on your lap, you can put it on this. It kind of protects the bottom of the laptop too. Anyway, just thought I'd share my thoughts today on cooling this machine down, keeping it not throttling for longer, and stay away from those pads, folks. That's for us YouTubers to experiment with, not for you to actually implement unless you're going to accept the consequences. All right, I had to do it. Here is the MacBook Air on the pad, and here's the MacBook Air without a pad. This is the 24 gigabyte variety. This is the base model. Yeah, they're both at 108 degrees right now, running Xcode benchmark. Just out of curiosity, wanted to see what happens here. They're both throttling. Now, I did start this test when they were both at about 53 degrees, which is about 20 degrees higher than they normally sit at. So they're making almost the same kind of drawings. Wow. The fan is at maximum right now and you can adjust it in the back, but I'm guessing that it won't take you that far. So there are some conveniences and it might help with cooling overall. If you keep doing big builds and doing it over and over and over again, you'll still run into the same issues. So we've got 131 seconds over here on the base model and 129 seconds on the upgraded model. And this is after running it a couple times. The results are consistent. That's just my two cents. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.